Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com. We're at Farm Tech 2016 in the Real Ag studio. We've had lots of guests this week. And we're joined by another great one, Greg Stamp <laughs> of Stamp Seeds. How are you doing? Good, thanks, Sean. I probably shouldn't say great until I hear what you have to say. That's true. But, uh, don't <laughs> prejudge. You can edit this later. Yeah, so we came all the way to Edmonton <laughs> to talk, and we're actually neighbors. Well, sort of neighbors. Yeah. Neighbors from the, like a Saskatchewan kind of neighborship <laughs> kind of... We see each other more in Edmonton than we do at home. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably true. <laughs> and I'm in your yard quite often. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you're clearly enjoying Farm Tech. Yeah, it's a great show. Yeah. This, year, this year, the speakers are probably even better than previous years, I would say. Yeah, Deb and I weren't on the sesh, the list, though, so I don't know. Could, it wasn't that good. <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you were last year, weren't you? Uh, two years ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, but, uh, so you're in a concurrent session mm. talking about something that is, uh, I think people are very familiar with in other areas of the world, uh, like Europe, mm -hmm. uh, growth regulators yeah. and your experience with them. Right. Uh, why would I think about a growth regulator in Alberta? Definitely anyone that's growing something on irrigation should think about it but especially if you're pushing fertility or growing a taller variety. So something like durums that are a little weaker straw, soft wheats that p potentially could have weaker straw. Those, so if you're on high moisture, such as irrigation or a high moisture area of the province or uh, a taller variety. You know, if you're growing something like carberry or much more, you pro even on irrigation, you probably don't need it unless you're like really extreme fertility. Okay, so let's back up though. What exactly does a growth regulator do? So it causes the uh, stem not to stretch or elongate as much during that, that period of the growth in the plant. So a couple of the products like Manipulator or Ethereal, two of the products we've used, um, you apply them at different times and it causes different types of shortening. So it's uh, just a different, different time, and different way they both work in the plant. But what we're trying to do is just shorten that plant from stretching out as tall. So shorten that space between the cells. Yeah, so we've... Uh, already this year, we've interviewed uh, some, from a wheat perspective, some uh, UK agronomists. Uh, we interviewed Graham Jones, I believe his name was, from New Zealand, who was the agronomist for the former world record wheat holder in oh, New yeah. Zealand. Yeah. Growth regulators are always mentioned as a part of that plan. Right. So is the fact that it's preventing lodging really what's why it's a part of the achieving higher yields? I think so. I think so. If, if you can... If you can shorten that crop and pre prevent lodging, we've seen huge advantages with, with that. Like some people have seen 30% yield advantage when that crop is going to lodge. If your crop's not going to lodge, we haven't seen quite as much, but there hasn't been enough research on that in right. Western Canada. So just on a dry land year, in, in one of the concurrent sessions I was in, one of the farmers stood up and said, I tried some manipulator and uh, it was in drought conditions. My crop was very short and I still saw a yield difference. Like I, he still saw mm. a 10% difference in his yield and it was a dry crop so I think different varieties will react differently and even on dry situations it might still have an impact so we need to do more more trials more work yeah, on you, our own farms and yeah you mentioned manipulator now they're eth ethrol ethrol okay yep. that's, so that, the that's, other one? that's the one that majority of people started using before manipulator was on the market and how I learned was local farmers in our area you know seed customers of ours that I was chatting with um, they're using the ethrol and they're applying it at the flag leaf and they were getting really good uh, height reduction and, and straw strength on their crops. So we started doing it because we wanted that same, we wanted our crop to be standing and not laying down in those low areas of the, of the irrigation field. Yeah, right. And being able to time our fungicides right. You know, the heads are still all standing up perfectly and you get on there with your fungicide at the right time for fusarium control. Now, I'm going from my memory here, which might not be very good, but yeah. uh, application window. I remember hearing that the application window is, is quite tight and precise. Is v that very tight for ethereal. Okay. Yeah. So manipulator, more flexible. Uh, ethereal, it's more tight. But I, can fi I find the ethereal has a bigger impact on the crop as well for height reduction. Risk reward. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you could have a two-day window or, or a five-day window. It depends on how fast the crop is growing. I would say typically it's like a four-day window. But that okay. means you have to be scouting your crop quite often. Like it's not just that once a week scouting. It's and not the 50 mile an hour scout you're doing out the side of your truck, like get in the field. Yeah, and how even is your crop? If your crop's really uneven, you, you know, maybe it's not a great year to be using that because you're gonna have crop that's too too uh, immature for that application. Okay. You want majority of your crop with the flag leaf out, but you don't want any of those heads out because if the heads are out, you're too late. Or even if the ons are coming out, you're too late. Yeah. So. Let's assume it's applied properly. It's yeah. done its job. Yeah. 
do you notice outside of yield from a harvestability standpoint mm. is do you notice any differences is there some setbacks or anything like that this, the speed of your machinery can be faster because if you're swathing or harvesting it'll go through the machine a bit faster some farmers say you could use more fuel because the straw is tougher i haven't really seen that myself i think it goes through easier okay um, but but as far as just managing getting that stuff through your combine whether you're swathing or combining i think you can gain speed compared to a, a downed or a nested crop Right. So you, you can go faster. Well, if we think about barley as an example, right, where one of the things we always talk about with barley is that, man, I need something that stands up. And yeah. some of the older varieties that were those semi-dwarfs, like an Earl, yeah. for example, yeah. it would stand through anything and just littered with disease eventually. But uh, you know, being able to use a product like this on some of the new varieties can well, be a big th asset. Well, that's the problem with barley. None of these are registered on barley. It would be an awesome. What? I know it would be an awesome product for barley. So if you can believe it, so maybe eventually that'll happen. And I believe Ethereal used to, but currently there's no registration of any of these products on barley to shorten them. And that would be an awesome application. Like look at Feedlot Alley where we live, right? Yeah. <laughs> High fertility barley crops, even silage crops. I mean, if you could keep that silage crop standing a little better, so you can get through there faster with your swather and not lay, leave volume on the ground. Okay, hold on here. You, <laughs> it's just between you and me. You've used it on barley though, right? Uh, <laughs> 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 we'll talk later. Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so right now, most of these products are registered for wheat. Yeah, uh, which includes Durham. So like Manipulator is an awesome product for Durham, but right now there's no MRL for the US. Uh, so, okay. So say you're se so if you're going to use it, talk to your grain buyer because um, most of them have a separate bin that they will put Manipulator treated grain and otherwise you have to sign a declaration saying you didn't use manipulator. Okay. So so they, yeah. they, they, they want to make sure so you either did or didn't and- Do your homework. Do your homework, yeah, talk to your buyers. But so like Durham, I don't know if someone has a separate bin for Durham in there. I haven't talked to those guys. Okay. But when I use it on my seed production, like I'm, I use manipulator on my crops that I'm growing for seed and it shortened the crop, it helped Stand, standability really good and, and Durham it worked awesome on. So uh, you've given your concurrent session. Mm -hmm. What's been the reaction from the audience? Are they sort of believing or are they non-believers? What, what's sort of the reaction? Well, they just want to learn how to be able to use it. So they're doing some trials and things like that because they know they can't use too much of it yet if their buyers aren't accepting because of the US MRL issue that isn't solved yet, but will be eventually. And uh, so they just want to learn how to use it and where to use it and where it can make sense on their farm. Because, I mean, it's not free. You're spending money, so they want to make sure what's the yeah. return, you know, what's the risk reward, where to use it. In that agronomy toolkit, yeah, it's a possible tool that you can use. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Well, Greg, thanks a lot for joining us today. Okay. Uh, enjoy the last day of farm tech. And uh, yet, what's been your favorite part? Ooh, I, I did enjoy the Terry O'Reilly. I'm looking forward to Brett Wilson, though. Yeah, I, I I'm looking forward to his talk. Okay, so I got to ask. We're gonna we've been asking some very very personal questions <laughs> of some of the. <laughs> this is gonna get really personal, Greg. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so the theme here has been storytelling. Okay? okay, when you think of uh, whether it's books you've read or pe speakers you've listened to, mm -hmm. who's your favorite storyteller? I was at the uh, a conference in Calgary this fall, and uh, Romeo Dallaire, oh. our former general, was there. Were, were you at that conference? No, but I've heard him speak. He was unbelievable. Uh, so it was kind of a talk focusing on leadership, and but it talked about you know how he was he was under the uh, command of the UN but he was in charge of his, his unit or whatever it's called. And, and there was, they, he was told to leave the area and he knew that if he left the area, the people that were in front of him were gonna be dead. Like he just knew that they were gonna be wiped out. And, yeah. and he, so, so his was, he, he was talking about how do you make decisions when you're, you're under pressure and you know in your gut what the right decision is, but your boss or your in command person is saying, you know, you have to leave because you guys are then in jeopardy yourselves. But, but in his gut, he said, I can't leave these people to die. And it, it was yeah. just an unbelievable. And, and then he brought it back, just the leadership in your own business and looking at people as a human person and, and coming back to that level of, uh, you know, you're no different than that person. And, and how, how would you treat that person if they were a member of your family? And, yeah. you know, it was I, just I, unbelievable. I sat beside him on a plane one time. Oh. So he was in the seat beside me. And uh, we were two of the first to board. We we're sitting down and I... I gotta be honest. At first, I was like, I, I recognize him. I should know who that is, and I'm like, Google searching. And <laughs> you take a picture of his face. <laughs> yeah, and no, like, I, yeah, Google I knew it was military. Like I knew <laughs> okay. it. Yeah, I just could not put a name to it. Every single person that walked on that plane either shook his hand 
or some people like uh, army people saluted him. Really? Like really? it was, it was yeah. kind of, and he took the time and talked to everybody. Wow. It, was, it was pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah, I, I have a ton of respect for him. He, he's a amazing storyteller and, and just an amazing story about how to interact with people and recognize people for the human being they are. It was, yeah. it was amazing. Cool. Greg, thanks a lot for joining us and enjoy the rest of Farm Tech. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Thank you.